Good morning. Let us pray. Great God, we thank you for this day. A day that ne we have never seen before and that we will never see again. But God, you have given us this opportunity or and ordained this moment in time for us to travel from near and far, to come and to mark this day as the beginning for these, your medical students. God, we thank you for this institution. We thank you for how you have brought us thus far. God, we thank you for the students, the faculty, and the staff, and the families and friends that have come to support. Now, God, we ask that you work within these students on this day. Help them to create a historical marker in their minds so that when fear comes, when challenges come, they can remember this day that they put on this white coat, and not just a white coat, but took up a mantle that will give them the notion of responsibility for the call that you have given them and the gifts that you have bestowed upon them. Now, God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you activate our spirits, activate our senses so that we can see your hand at work. God, we ask right now that you move by your spirit and by your power. Endow these students with knowledge. Endow them with courage and with strength. Restore them in times when they feel weak and tired, O oh God. Give them what they stand in need of. Now let your Holy Spirit descend upon this room so that we can see your glory and your power. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. If you agree with this prayer, let us say together, amen. Good morning, everyone. I bring you greetings on behalf of the board of Mary Medical College, the staff and faculty on this glorious day. Back in 1876, Dr. Hubbard taught the first students at Mary in the basement of a church close by. And many thousands of students have walked through our corridor since that time. My point is that you join us. Storied legacy here at Mary Medical College, and we're so proud to have you as part of our family. This day is always an exciting day in the life of our institution when we get to greet a new group of students into the Meharry diaspora. For a lot of us who are faculty members and staff, we get to touch the future by playing a small part of getting you ready to go out into the world and change the world. And that's a pretty cool thing to be able to touch the future. The ceremony that you're all about to witness symbolizes the transition that has occurred for these outstanding students. They're no longer laypersons, but have been admitted into healthcare professions, professions that are highly respected and rightly so. These are professions where integrity, service, and commitment are paramount. In the earliest days of healthcare in the United States, Healers were associated with quackery, mysticism, and many shady characters who called themselves, quote unquote, doctors. In an attempt to symbolize in the late 18th century that medicine had transitioned into a science-based discipline, doctors co-opted the symbol of science and research, which is the white coat worn by scientists. That is why you, in fact, wear the white coat to remind you that it is a scientific-based discipline that mandates integrity, service, and a commitment to continual learning. As you go through your journey, you have to make and remake yourself, retool and retool yourself because everything is changing. And not as an insult to our fine faculty members because they're fantastic. You're going to discover that much of what you were taught has either changed or was incorrect. That doesn't mean that you're wasting time learning this. What it means is that the learning how to learn is really important, because you have to do that your whole life. So please keep that in mind. But you are here sitting in those seats because you've worked hard, you've achieved great things, but the greater is before you. 
and want you to know that you are now part of the Mahari diaspora, where our motto is worship of God through service to mankind, and we embrace it, we treasure it, and we mandate it. So, and we are a religious institution, but one definition of religion is ultimate concern. Paul Tillich wrote that all of us have something that to us is an ultimate concern. For some it's money, for some it's sex, for some it's fame, for some it's power. All of us have something that is an ultimate concern. You now have an ultimate concern, which is to prepare yourself to provide the best care of people who sit in front of you, who entrust you with the most precious thing they have, which is their health. Never take that for granted. Please always remember that, that you have an ultimate concern. But let's enjoy and celebrate this great day when you put those white coats on and the transition occurs. So welcome to all of you and congratulations on your success thus far. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Good morning. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. All right. That was our chief cheerleader. You can see he needs no introduction. And he is definitely invested not only in leading our institution, but caring for the folks that are here. And I have the pleasure, we have a new dean of the School of Medicine. And when I say new, she's brand spanking new. <laughs> she came on to join us August 1st. How new is that? And her first day in the office was this past Monday. How new was that? So without further ado, I want to, to welcome our new dean of the School of Medicine, Dr. Sonia Harris Haywood. Greetings and good morning. Greetings to all the faculty, staff, family, and friends who are here to help us celebrate the class of 2027 at your white coat ceremony. Let's salute this class and give them a round of applause. I want to commend you. I want to commend your class. Your dream is no longer deferred as the great post poet Langston Hughes feared. The countless hours of pre-medical education is in your past. You are a member of Meharry School of Medicine, 147th entering, 40, 147th entering class. You need to give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> Why? Because you are a history fact in the making. I also want to thank the faculty and administration and the staff who come out to support our students. Special acknowledgement to our white coat presenters. These individuals are just a few of Meharry's dedicated team who have committed their careers to educating the next generation of physicians. Please join me in saluting them with a round of applause. Your class, right now, you are living a dream. The dream of becoming a physician. Your dream is a dream within a dream. A dream within the dreams of your family, friends, mentors, sponsors, and coaches. All the people who have had and will continue to live your dream. I want to take a minute and acknowledge those friends, family, mentors, sponsors, and coaches 
as you stand and give them a round of applause. I gotta stand, we gotta stand. The white coat has symbolized the medical profession for over 100 years. The 33-year-old white coat ceremony represents a white of passage, signifying your commitment to the lifelong pursuit of medical knowledge and the care of your patients. The short white coat, which you will receive today, symbolizes that you are a medical student in training to become a physician. Training for the honor to have patients place their trust in you, seek solace and guidance during their most valuable times. You are in training to save lives. It was 30 years ago this month that I was sitting right where you are, beginning my first day of my medical career, my first year in medical school. Although I didn't have the privilege of receiving my white coat in a ceremony, I had instant pride in my white coat when it was given to me. I kept it cleaned, ironed, and wore it every opportunity I could. <laughs> Even today, I am immensely proud in my white coat. Today I feel especially blessed to stand in front of you for the first time in my Meharry white coat. I will be honored to wear my white coat in clinic when teaching or seeing patients. I, it will be a constant reminder to myself and others that I am a member of this noble profession, a member of Meharry's team. As you take your oath today, commit yourself to wearing your Meharry white coat as a symbol of respect of our profession as a symbol of admiration for those who have come before you, the legacy of 100 and plus classes of Meharry graduates. But most of all, determine what it symbolizes for you and wear your white coat first and foremost for that reason. Congratulations again for embarking on this remarkable journey to becoming a physician. You are Meharry's future. You are our nation's future. You are a history fact in the making. Thank you, Dean. You see, she's already fired up. She's got her Meharry coat. How about that? Um, we are now blessed with a Meharian is getting ready to come and talk to you. She has had a seat where you are now sitting. She has gone through and now she is out in the world and she has some special things to say to you. Dr. Heather Horton is a neurologist in Franklin, Tennessee. She is affiliated with multiple hospitals in the Georgia area, including Bayshore Medical Center at Hackensack Meridian Health in Raritan Bay and Old Bridge Medical Centers at Hackensack Meridian Health. Dr. Horton has a wide array of experiences, including private practice, traditional neurology, a neurohospitalist, and teleneurology. After earning a doctorate of medicine from where? My Harry Medical College, you bet. In Nashville, Tennessee, she completed an internship in internal medicine at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center and a residency at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. Dr. Horton is certified by the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology. 
since graduating from Meharry Medical College and completing her residency at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center, Dr. Horton has been in practice. She's a well-published physician and has been spotted in the Middle Tennessee Health and Wellness Magazine discussing topics such as multiple sclerosis and dementia. In her free time, Dr. Horton enjoys spending time with her son, Hugh, and her baby triplet daughters, Heather, Daisy, and Poppy, as well as cooking and traveling. So you can see Meharians do a lot of things. <laughs> and without further ado, we would like Dr. Heather Horton to tell you what's up. Thank you for the introduction. I remember back to my white coat ceremony, um, and it's definitely a humbling experience to be able to come back and talk to you all. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty, and most importantly, students of Meharry Medical College. Today, we gather here for a momentous occasion, the white coat ceremony, a symbolic rite of passage that marks the transition from classroom learning to the world of clinical medicine. As you prepare to embark upon your second year of medical school, heading into your shadowing, into your clinical rounds, into your full hospital rotations, I stand before you with immense pride and admiration for the journey you have undertaken thus far. The white coat itself is a symbol of professionalism, purity, and the trust bestowed upon medical professionals by society. It represents the transition from being a medical student to becoming a healthcare provider with real responsibilities. You may be surprised to learn that prior to the late 19th centuries, doctors wore not white, but black garb. Physicians wore black for their patient interactions since medical encounters were thought of as serious and formal matters. Doctors then dressed more like clergymen and as a matter of fact, nuns in black habits served as nurses. To this day, nurses in England are called sisters because of modern medicine's origins as a last resort and a frequent precursor to death. The solemn nature of the healthcare practitioner's role in encounters with parishioners was reflected in their black dress. It wasn't until the close of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th centuries that medicine became the truly scientific enterprise that we now know, and the whiteness or pureness of medicine became reflected in the garbs of physicians and nurses and gave way to the garb that you are now honored to don today. This moment is not just about putting on a white coat. It symbolizes the responsibilities, the privilege, and the trust bestowed upon you as future physicians. As students of a historically black medical school, you carry with you the weight of a rich legacy. The trailblazers before you shattered barriers, overcame adversities, and paved the way for your presence here today. You stand on their shoulders, and it is your duty to honor their sacrifices and the dreams of, of your community. This year will be a turning point in your medical education. You will move beyond textbooks and lectures and step into the real world of patient care. The clinical setting will challenge you in ways you have never experienced before. Embrace it with open arms, for it is here that you will discover the essence of medicine, the art of healing, the power of compassion, and the beauty of humanity. At some point in your journey, you will find yourself squarely at the intersection of these three principles, as I did when I was introduced to a patient that would change the trajectory of my career here at Meharry Medical College. This patient was a 22-year-old with an inoperable brain tumor. She was progressively losing her vision and going blind. She was very strong with her prognosis and her family said that she could handle every, anything. Her family confirmed she was strong. She had good belief, she had a strong support system. She herself 
even said that she wasn't worried about it. At such a young age, she was ready to carry the weight and shoulder such a disability without any issue. However, after receiving her diagnosis and discussing the prognosis further with her, she suddenly became paralyzed in her lower extremities. First, she was losing her vision. Second, she found out she had an inoperable brain tumor and now this was happening to her and she was still holding together. She underwent extensive testing, imaging, lumbar punctures, tests repeatedly, even sometimes the same test to see if there was any change from day to day. Nothing changed. The testing aside from the brain tumor was coming back normal. By diagnosis of exclusion, we came to the conclusion of conversion disorder, which is now known as functional neurological disorder. This case inspired me to pursue neurology because it allowed me to not only see the true complexity of medicine, but it also showed me the beauty of compassion and humanism in medicine. It also brings new meaning to the phrase we say today, check on your friends, even the ones who are strong and seem to be holding it together because they may be going through things and just not displaying it in ways that we would expect them to. And some things that friends and family don't catch, being a physician, a true compassionate human being physician will allow you to catch those things. As you embark on your clinical rounds, remember that medicine is not just about diagnosing diseases and prescribing treatments. It is about connecting with your patients on a human level. Each person who lies in that hospital bed has a story, fears, dreams, and loved ones waiting anxiously outside the doors. Listen to their stories, for they will tell you more about their condition than any lab test can. In an age when artificial intelligence is increasingly used to process vast amounts of data, identify patterns, and assist in diagnostics, it's important to remember that there is one thing that AI cannot do, and that is be you. The human personal element of healthcare is more important now than ever before. Bedside manner, the interpretation of nonverbal cues, cultural sensitivity, and the capacity to provide emotional support are key functions of an effective physician that a computer cannot replicate. So as you move forward in your medical careers, be encouraged. These tools are developing in order to help you, but you could never be replaced. Oliver Sacks, the famed British neurologist, put it best. In examining disease, we gained wisdom about anatomy and physiology and biology. In examining the person with the disease, we gain wisdom about life. You will encounter moments of triumph and joy witnessing the impact of your interventions. However, there will also be moments of heartache when despite your best efforts, you may not be able to save someone's health. During these times, do not lose sight of the fact that you are not alone. Lean on your mentors, your fellow students, and your support networks. In the face of adversity, remember the strength that brought you here the strength derived from your community, your ancestors, and your own indomitable spirit. The way to being an MD has been paved for you by many black Americans who came before you, and most notably, the first black American to become a physician, Dr. James McCune Smith. Born in 1813, Dr. Smith somehow overcame the barriers of his time to attain remarkable educational achievements and professional success. After being denied admission to American medical schools due to racial prejudice, Dr. Smith pursued his education in Scotland, where he earned his medical degree from the University of Glasgow in 1837. Upon returning to the United States, he became a prominent advocate for civil rights, working tirelessly to combat racial inequality and uplift the African-American community. 
Dr. McCune Smith's medical practice and intellectual contributions significantly impacted the field of medicine, and his advocacy played a pivotal role in advancing the rights and opportunities for African Americans in the 19th century. His legacy stands as a testament to resilience, determination, and the enduring fight for equality in the face of adversity. And this is the legacy that you join today. You have proven time and again that you belong here, that you are capable, and that you are meant to make a difference in the lives of countless people, just like Dr. McCune Smith. Let this year be one of growth, not just as future physicians, but also as compassionate human beings. Take the time to understand the perspectives of those from diverse backgrounds, for medicine is a tapestry woven from threads of various cultures, experiences, and beliefs. Embrace diversity and let it enrich your practice. As you progress through your clinical rotations, don't be afraid to ask questions, challenge norms, and advocate for your patients. You are the voice of the voiceless and your actions can change lives. Be humble enough to learn from your mistakes and resilient enough to stand tall after setbacks. And do not be afraid to ask for help. Always remember that the pursuit of knowledge doesn't end with medical school. Medicine is an ever evolving field and you must commit yourself to a lifetime of learning and growth. Seek opportunities for continuing education and research for they will keep you at the forefront of medical advancements. As you wear your white coat, remember that it carries the hopes and aspirations of your community. It represents not just your own achievements, but the collective determination to uplift and heal. Let it be a reminder of the incredible responsibility you bear and the profound impact you can make on the lives of others. So, as you head into your second year of medical school, I implore you to embrace the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Be compassionate healers, fierce advocates, and lifelong learners. Draw strength from the legacy of those who came before you and the support of your community. You are the future of medicine, and I have no doubt that you will shine brightly, illuminating the path for generations to come. Congratulations, and may you have a transformative and inspiring year. Thanks so much, Dr. Horton. Um, there's a little uh, mix up in the program there. Uh, I about gave Dr. Uh, Dontel Johnson a stroke when he looked up and saw his name in the presentation of, of Coates, because that meant he had to pronounce all these names. Um, we switched. Uh, no, I'm going to um, call the names. This is what you came here to see, to see your, your significant folks, your children, spouses, friends, significant others, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, get their equipment. Dr. Horton already said there's a legacy to follow. Dr. Hildreth said that. Dr. Harris Haywood said that. So at this point, we're gonna ask our illustrious faculty to come and line up in front, I'm going to say their names. They don't have to come in order. They're going to wave at you as uh, they come, and then we'll start calling the names of the students. Dr. Samuel Adunya, Dr. Keith Lustig, Dr. Larry Alexander, Dr. Anita Austin, Dr. Billy Ballard, Dr. Exelana Bean, Dr. Subaker Mocha, I'm so sorry, Dr. Mocha, I, I tried. <laughs> Dr. Lorda Williamson, Dr. LaMonica Stewart, Dr. David McLario, Dr. Dana Marshall, Dr. Cassandra Ward, Dr. Calvin Smith, Dr. Carolyn Satella, um, 
Dr. Suzanne Tropez Sims, Dr. C.B. Dash, Dr. Richard Akataway. Dr. Mocha, uh, no, Dr. M. Coma, Dr. Eberto Reigns. Come on, Doc. <laughs> Come on, Doc. <laughs> Dr. Rhodes. And Dr. Jamie Ware. Golly, Dr. Ware, I actually thought you were a student. Oh, golly. <laughs> Wow. So now, the moment you've been waiting for, um, I'm going to call the names of the students. They're going to come and stand in front of the faculty, and then um, they will be done. For the folks that are donning them, when your student is called, please just come stand in front of the faculty that they're standing in. Don your young person and then go back to your seat. All right, here we go. Sarah Abate. Nadira Abdul Abdar. Timelolua Ajay. Ibera Ajoku. Sophia Akataway. Nana Akoise Ab Agoboa. Avi Albert. Azar Ali. Salma Amin. Zin Ulvi. Ayla Andrews. Adiola Anamisu. Michael Anuku. Hanin Hukel. Asa Awe. Nuha Basun, Vegas, sorry. Sequoia Barber. Kelkadon Burkell. Chris Ann Bennett. Jalen Billy. Clarence Bolden, Jr. Okay. We got one more. Katie Fredrickson. All right, you may don our students. You may go back to your seats, students. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. Amanda Brechko. Dayton Campbell. 
Chantal Carnes. Chelsea Carter. Courtney Chandler. Jasmine Clark. Michael Cobo. Danine Como. Shay Michael Cope. Kevin Crumpton, Jr. Micah Dancy. Tappan Dargy. Dever Darkins. Trey Dollar. Justin Duncan. Mallory Dunphy. Cameron Eason. Tammy Esohe Ihiwima. Adam Fareed. Shanika Francis. Juan Galindo. Michelle Gordese. Lauren Gordon. Presenters, please don the students. Students, you can now be seated. Thank you. them a second. <clears throat> Ashlyn Gray. Wadlid Heron. Kennedy Hamilton. Edward Hammond de Brady. Ryan Bell Heron. <laughs> Kaylin Hayes. <laughs> Jael Iyawe. <laughs> Joseph Johnson. Keyshawn Jackson. Yeah. Derenique Jones. <laughs> <laughs> D 
Dajane Nesbitt. Jasmine Nichols. Oma Jeffe Obeyan. Presenters, please don the students. Students, you may return to your seats. <laughs> Faculty, you may return to your seats. Thank you. All right, we have a Meharian who has not been far removed from sitting right where you are. He's gonna come and he's going to deliver the oath of commitment. Dr. Dontel Johnson. Would you all please rise? All right, um, it's really tough following Meharians, Meharry doctors, especially Meharry doctors who have given birth to triplets. Um, but I'm gonna do my best. Um, if y'all allow me just a little bit, I've given five or I've taken five oaths in my life. Uh, I took an oath to my fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated in college. Um, I took an oath to my wife right when I got into medical school. I took an oath as a doctor when I graduated from the Meharry Medical College. And I took an oath as an officer in the Army National Guard, Tennessee. That's four, right? So my fifth oath was what you all are about to do now, what I'm about to read to you. And this is all about commitment. Every single one of these oaths I've ever taken in my life is about commitment. You need to be committed to each other. When it gets tough, lean on each other. Be committed to your professors and our amazing uh, president and our whole entire institution that's built to help you to succeed when it gets really, really tough, because it's gonna get tough. But the same people that gave me my little white coat helped me get this fancy, long white coat. All right, and we will get you there. All right, so without further ado, please read after me. The Oath of Commitment. As I begin my career as a student physician here at Meharry Medical College, I make this commitment, I will. Accept nothing other than the full pursuit of excellence for myself in this, my chosen career. I will hold inviolate the trust and confidence that patients extend to me as a student physician. I will always respect patients as persons and protect patient autonomy, elevate patient welfare above all other concerns. All persons with compassion and dignity. I will treat all those who seek my help with humanism and compassion. I will offer to my fellow students any help or assistance that is within my power to give should they require it, and extend to them the same respect and trust that I wish to be shown to me. I will safeguard and nurture a culture of integrity and trustworthiness at Meharry Medical College in our profession by encouraging my peers to act ethically by responding appropriately. I will conduct my personal and professional life with total integrity. I will be trustworthy and act with integrity in all spheres of professional life, academics, patient care, clinical research, and professional relationships. I will not cheat, plagiarize, use unauthorized materials, misrepresent my work, falsify data, or assist others in the commission of these acts, and enter into a mutual relationship of trust and respect with those who teach me. 
recognizing that their aspirations for me are inevitably greater than those I have for myself. I will continue the pursuit of knowledge throughout the entire whole of my life if I am to be among the best, which I will be in my profession. All right, thank you. Y'all can be seated. We got a few thank yous because there were some folks that made this day happen for you. And I think you, I want you to join me in acknowledging them. Before I say that, I, I want to acknowledge some special folks here in the audience. All our family is special, but we have some special Meharians that are with us today. Dr. Claire Elam, who is, stand up, Ms. Elam. You know, wave at them then. <laughs> if you read your history that uh, Ms. Parham gave you, you will know her husband, and she gave a lot to this institution in making it to be what it is. We've got some future Meharians here too the um, students from the Levi Watkins Early Accelerated Medical and Dental Pathway are here. And the head of the institution, Dr. Uh, Miss Barbara Merrill, we call her Dean. And I see Dr. Sharon Peters there. And is Miss Hodge here? Am I missing it? Miss Lalita Hodge is the executive director. Would y'all? Stand up, wave at us, please. For those of you who have not heard about Levi Watkins, these are high school students that just started in um, TSU, and they will be at TSU for three years, and then they will come to Meharry. And um, so we're excited to have them. Again, there's some folks that made this day happen. First and foremost, Tyler Dixon. The students already know, they can tell you. Um, she worked tirelessly. Uh, to help put things together and help get this in order so it would be a special day. Our illustrious faculty. <laughs> that came here, they still have some duties and some of them are gonna run to get to where they need to be next, but they wanted to be here with you. Um, our volunteers, would you wave at us? Volunteers all over the place. <laughs> Students, staff, they know we couldn't do this without them. Um, our White Coat Committee, uh, a lot of them are sitting here in the faculty. Um, our speaker, Dr. Horton. And I, I wrote this down first but I think we have some board members here. Let me get this straight. What, I think it's Dr. Floyd. Dr. Floyd, would you stand up? I'm sorry, Dr. Floyd, I should have acknowledged you first from our board of trustees. Did I miss any other? Okay. Definitely Dr. Hildreth, who really gives us the support to do what it is we do. Dean Harris Hillwood, who has just jumped in and supported things. Reverend Hall, who pulled a friend out of, uh, um, out of the fire. Because I just, I remembered to tell him about four days ago that he needed to do this four times and not one. <laughs> so that's the Meharians the dedicated folks 
that are dedicated to you. And does anybody remember what number you are? 1.53. Parents and family, your students represent 1.53% of all the applications we received last year. You are some very special people. We chose you. This is not, you didn't get here by accident. So when it gets tough, when it looks like you think you can't do this, you've got to know we chose you. We're counting on you. It's going to be 150 years for this school soon. And we've been putting out great physicians that are all over the world. You've got a lot of challenges ahead. We're counting on you. As I tell you all the time, I'm a dinosaur. It's time for me to go out to pasture pretty soon. <laughs> so we're counting on you. You're fighting climate change. You're fighting the first time in this country that more children are dying from gunshot wounds than anything else. We got more mothers and babies of color dying than any other time. That's just some of the challenges that you have to deal with. But we're counting on you. We're counting on you. We support you. We invest in you. Our goal is to get you to match and graduation. So remember this ceremony, but we got two more coming. Two more coming. I hope you'll have a great rest of the afternoon. You enjoy your young folks. They're, we're going to borrow them for just 20 more minutes. We've got to run them up a hill and take a nice picture, and then they're all yours. But again, we thank family and friends. Um, we thank family and friends. These young folks couldn't be here without you. So again, we thank you for coming. We thank you for uh, sharing this time. We thank you for the support that you've given these young folks and that you will continue to give them through their journey. Thank you very much and have a great day.